right, what's up everybody? Um, so today I decided to finally get around to making uh, that breeding epistogram and dwarf cichlids video I promised a long time ago. Um, so, alright, first on stuff. the list, what are dwarf cichlids? Dwarf cichlids are uh, obviously cichlids, which means they're perch fish under the uh, subfamily cichlidae. They hail from South America, Central America, um, Southern Central America, and I think there might be some in uh, Southern uh, Southern U.S. There are some in West Africa, so, such as the pelvic acromis and uh, some other ident unidentified species. None of them are really uh, that popular in the hobby, so you're not going to really find them unless you go searching for them, other than the uh, pelvic acromis. All of them stay below five inches. Um, you're not going to find a dwarf, cich a, uh, dwarf cichlid um, bigger than five inches. Obviously, um, the definition can range from uh, three to, uh, to five or six inches, but most of them um, stay below four inches, like the ones you're seeing right in front of you right now, um, Epistogramma of Cacatoides. Uh, these guys are dwarf cichlids, and they I haven't seen any of them get any larger than uh, about four inches, including the tail length. That's three inches, um, just their body. There's some uh, pictures of them. Um, so most of them stay small, which is great for uh, most hobbyists, considering most of us don't have 500 square feet for our fish tank, uh, fish rooms. Um, so you can keep them in smaller tanks, like uh, five and a half, um, ten gallons. But obviously, the bigger the tank, the more you can have. Um, you can get into a colony setting, which I'll get into later. So yeah, um, the ones you're gonna find in the hobby are Epistogramma species, most notably um, Vegeta slash McMarstri, um, Cacatoides or A Cacatoides, um, um, Microgeophagus. Uh, Ramirezi and um, their cousin, their only relative actually, um, Altspinosa. Uh, I might be butchering the name, I never really got around to figuring out how to pronounce that, but uh, the Rams, um, the Bolivian Rams and the Blue Rams, what am I thinking of? Epistogramma Honslai can be found sometimes, um, Epistogramma Bataniata can be found occasionally, um, but as you, uh, pelvic chromis, uh, pelvic chromis crebensis, and, uh, their relatives can be found sometimes, um, cribs, um, as they're called, but, um, if you notice, um, the only ones that are really popular, the only genuses that are really popular are the epistos, or epistogrammas, the microgeophagus, the rams, uh, the pelvic chromis, the cribs, um, and dwarf pikes, which are the, uh, larger end of the dwarf cichlid uh, category. They um, aren't that popular, I mean, for fish hobbyists um, that are serious, um, you can, they're pretty popular. Alright, that's uh, it for what are dwarf cichlids. Um, next up on the list is where can you get dwarf cichlids? Obviously you might find them in your uh, local fish store. Um, if they have any available, but usually the only ones they're going to have are cockatoides, um, the dwarf rams, and cribs, the pivicacromas crebensis specifically. Um, then I'm usually going to have a big range. Uh, Epistogramma borreli can sometimes be found, um, and the Epistogramma sp electric blue, which hasn't been described. Um, unfortunately, no one knows if it's a... Uh, what am I thinking? If it's a hybrid or not. So, uh, no, atheologists are kind of waiting on uh, getting around to that, I guess. But, um, so obviously you're not going to find the more difficult end of the uh, spectrum of dwarf cichlids at most local fish stores. Um, obviously, don't go to PetSmart or Petco. Even if they do have them, you don't. Unless you have a really good manager at their uh, store, they're going to be in terrible condition and they're going to die instantaneously, pretty much. So, um, the best place to get them um, are at a good local fish store or um, online, places like aquabid.com, um, live aquarium, live aquarium, uh, dot 
net, I think it is, or dot com. Um, what else am I thinking about? That pet place sometimes has some really good, uh, better brooks liquids in. Um, I'm drawing a blank <laughs> on who I'm thinking of, but um, there are some good online aquariums, uh, fish stores. That, uh, just do a good search on Google or Bing, whatever you want. But uh, do a nice search on that, and uh, you're going to get a lot of results. Uh, you've noticed that female right there is getting really ticked off at everyone in this tank. I'll uh, get to that. Alright, uh, next. Um, so, third on the list is the conditions for keeping most dwarf cichlids. Um, by most, I mean pretty much all. Uh, so, like I said, dwarf cichlids are found on the southern uh, parts of the Americas and western Africa. Um, where they're found, they're found in uh, either black or clear water streams, um, which are usually tributaries that are branching off um, or running into the uh, Amazon or larger rivers in um, Africa and South America. So they're in rivers that are usually no more than maybe five feet across, obviously a lot longer, but uh, they're not very deep, usually only no more than a meter deep. Um, so it's like a yard and a half, I think. Yard and like a few feet, whatever. But um, so they obviously aren't gonna go that high in the water column. Um, uh, like I said, black water uh, and clear water uh, waters, where um, the pH is affected a lot by the driftwood and the leaves um, that are falling into the tank, um, and also decaying plants and stuff like that, which um, really lowers the pH down to. Um, 6.5 to, um, there have been records of these guys living in uh, 4.5 to 4.2, uh, so they can, where they come from is on the much, much lower end of the uh, pH spectrum, um, so obviously in your home tank, uh, if, especially if the fish are wild caught, you want to replicate that as uh, closely as possible, as you can see. Um, in all of my tanks, I keep uh, peat moss and um, some stem plants. Um, in this tank, I've got some sag and uh, some cryptocorine, uh, cryptocrines, which aren't uh, very uh, accurate biologically, um, but uh, they work because they're uh, hardy. I don't um, really have to pay attention to them. Um, I've also got some stems of rotala that are just floating in here, waiting to go to another tank um, that I'll be setting up soon. Uh, but yeah, you want to have a lot of uh, um, what am I thinking of? Sphagnum moss, sphagnum peat moss, um, just like laying around in the bottom. You can also use it as um, peat extract, where you boil the peat or, um, and uh, take the boiled water and put it into your tank. I prefer using the peat straight up, yeah, just because um, it looks a lot more uh, natural for them and they really like all the hiding spots it provides. Um, peat, so peat, uh, driftwood, uh, make sure it's um, not, uh, well, that's annoying noise, I think that is my air pump. Yeah, that was my air pump. All right, <laughs> back to breeding. Growth cichlids, uh, so, what was I? Yeah, um, driftwood that hasn't been cured, which means it hasn't uh, been boiled um, to lose all of its tannins, which are what releases to make uh, black water. Uh, driftwood and leaf litter. Um, if you live in pretty much anywhere, you're going to find oak, uh, oak trees. So, oak leaves, um, I don't think of, drawn a blink, oh well. Um, leaves you can pretty much find in your backyard. Make sure they're oak leaves um, or Malaysian. Uh, still drawing a blank on that tree, but um, you can pretty much buy aquarium safe leaves um, anywhere, especially on eBay. You can get like 200 of them for 10, 16 bucks. Um, they're really, really nice, uh, really nice leaves. You just leave them in your tank. If you look a few videos back on my 
a Pistragama breeding experiment. You can see that leaf litter tank. I don't know if I had uh, taken off most of the leaves out yet, but it was um, pretty much all the way to the top of the tank where I had it, and they were breeding like crazy in that tank. So I had to take it down because I couldn't figure out where all the babies were. Um, but uh, leaf litter, driftwood, sphagnum moss, um, driftwood, make sure it has a lot of nooks and crannies and crevices in them for uh, the fish to either hide or breed. Um, in my experience, I've given my fish artificial caves and driftwood and leaf litter, and they always seem to breed in the driftwood or the leaf litter more often than they do in clay pots and um, other man-made caves, but they obviously still breed in those. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, for pH, and let's move on to the rest of the tank stats. Turn my headphones up. Louder. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What you need? 